Welcome to In The Workshop. Regular viewers will be aware that I'm currently involved in making a video series about rebuilding an old Stuart 5A. And just in case you're a new viewer and don't really know what a Stuart 5A is, it's a small, full-size steam engine. In order to lubricate the cylinder of this engine, a mechanical lubricator will be driven from one of the eccentrics. What I'm making is a lubricator to lubricate the crosshead. And at the moment in the milling machine are the two end blocks that are going to fit in this piece of square tubing. In this clip I'm milling a recess all the way around the end blocks and this is the part that's going to fit inside the square tubing. I'm milling these parts together in the machine vise because they were cut from the same piece of bar so the machine vise holds them both very securely and you will notice that I always mill with the cutter facing the work revolving towards the cutting area. Once I'd milled both of the blocks to the correct size to fit in the square tube, I did them one at a time and I turned them over, because what I need to do here is remove quite a lot of metal to make a bit of an angle, and I suppose I could have used some brass angle, but this is more fun and it shows you, the viewer, how to use a milling machine, even though I'm holding the milling cutter in a drill chuck, which you're not supposed to do because it can vibrate loose, but as this drill chuck is very old and really stiff, the cutter doesn't vibrate loose. And the reason for using a drill chuck like this is not just laziness, because I do have a Clarkson milling chuck as well, but I only have imperial collets for the milling chuck, and often the cutters that I buy are metric. As you can clearly see by this clip, I've milled one of the blocks into an angle to mount the tank. I'm now looking at the layout and where the pump's going to sit on top of the brass tank. And I know this is very crude marking out, but this is a prototype, so really, I'm just figuring it out as I go along. I neglected to mention that I also milled the second block in the same way as the first, and here they are, both loosely fitted to the end of the tube. But it's now time to remove them, because I need to drill a couple of holes initially in this piece of square tube. The large hole is to fill the tank with oil, and to the left of that I'm going to drill a small hole for the feed pipe to the pump. I want this tank to look really good, so I'm making a proper filler with a filler cap, that's going to be soldered into this hole. And I'm turning this on my Smart and Brown lathe. What I'm doing at the moment is just turning a register to fit into this hole like this. And it's still a little bit too big, so I'll take another cut and see how I go on with that. There are two reasons that I'm not using a micrometer. Mainly because I have the part in one hand and I can keep trying it for size. And the other reason is I don't want this to be a really tight fit in the hole. I'm going to silver solder the two end parts to the tube and I'm going to soft solder this to the top of the tube. So I need to leave some space for the solder to penetrate. And this is very important, even with silver soldering. If the silver solder cannot penetrate the joint, then the joint itself is not going to be very strong. I frequently come across built up model crankshafts that fail because the silver soldering has not penetrated the joint. Instead, it's just a weak ring of solder around the edge. Here's the general layout. This pump caught my eye at Blackgate's Engineering because it's very small. It's the smallest one I've ever seen. And it's really designed as a boiler water feed pump for a very small boiler. And its small physical size makes it perfect in this application as an oil pump. And it's silver soldering time. Here I'm applying the flux. I'm in the outer part of the workshop. And here we go. Plenty of heat is going to be required to silver solder this part successfully. You can see the size of the blowtorch nozzle here. It's a few sizes up from the ones that you normally buy in a DIY store. Silver soldering is quite a simple process if you have the right equipment. Some silver solder, the correct flux, and a suitable blowtorch to raise the temperature of the part to be soldered to red heat. And by red heat I don't mean bright red, you don't want to melt the brass but red heat is required. A good indicator is the flux. When the flux takes on a watery appearance, then you just touch the stick of silver solder onto the work and you'll see it flash around the joint. And as usual, I'm applying far too much silver solder to the work. And I do this on purpose in these videos, just to show the fact that the silver solder flows wherever the flux is. So if you have another look at the beginning of this operation when I'm applying the flux to the inside part, you will see that I'm putting plenty on to make sure I have full coverage. This is far too much silver solder. You don't need as much as this, but at least it's not going to leak. I'll clean it off on the belt sander later. 
After the part had cooled, I quenched it in some water and then turned it over to silver solder the other end. And I'm putting even more silver solder on this end. Look at that. Oh yes, a virtual orgy of silver solder going on here. Silver solder is quite expensive, so this is going to be possibly the most expensive oil tank I've ever made. But what I'm trying to achieve is to show how it flows, and it only flows if you have the correct temperature and the correct flux. And this, by the way, is Easy Flow number 2 flux, and I'm using Silver Flow 55 silver solder. Once the part had cooled a bit, I quenched it in water, cleaned it up, and now it's time to soft solder the oil tank filler in place. I could have silver soldered this part in place, but to show the difference between silver soldering and soft soldering, I use solder paint on this. And you don't have to heat it up very much, the solder melts and the job's finished. And for this part of the job, I didn't bother quenching the tank, I just let it cool naturally. After the silver soldering part of the operation, I'd already cleaned up the tank thoroughly on the belt sander. So all I need to do now is just rub over the part with some Scotch-Brite. And here it is. And I made this as well. This is a filler plug. I didn't make this from scratch, this was a filler plug I already had. And I just turned it down to fit in the hole and fitted an o-ring in a groove that I made in it. And when I sit the pump on top of it now, it's looking good. So it's time to fit the pump. The larger hole in the tank is for the feed pipe from the pump to go into and in this clip I'm tapping the other four holes 6BA to take some 6BA bolts but temporarily because the pump is going to have to be removed from the tank for painting the pump is fixed to the tank at the moment by using four 6BA slot head countersunk bolts and when everything's finished and painted I will be using 6BA hexagon bolts. When the engine is finished, I'm going to mount it on a quarter of an inch thick steel plate, and the pump will be mounted at the side of it like this. But I have to paint it first, so be prepared, there is some painting in this episode. But before painting the brass tank, I'm going to use some of this. This is grey single pack etch primer, which really bites into the brass and makes the paint stick to it. Some painting is going to follow very shortly, but before it starts, I'd just like to say a few words to my Patreon subscribers. I finally figured out how Patreon works. And now, Patreon subscribers who help me fund this channel, and believe me, that is very useful to me indeed, Patreon subscribers will only be required to pay their pledged amount on a monthly basis. For instance, if you pledged a dollar or a pound, you will pay a dollar or a pound. Not a dollar or a pound for every video that I make. That was getting a bit out of order. So if you wish to join Patreon and donate a pound or a dollar per month to my video channel, that would be great as it helps me finance the channel and the amount of videos that I make, not to mention my addiction to those small pots of coconut yoghurt. I really recommend those. Anyway, enough of that. Time now for a little painting. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.